While us Americans are mindlessly chomping away at our Hershey's bars, some of our friends across the pond are kind of disgusted by what we're eating, even though it tastes good to us. They've said American chocolate tastes like vomit and earwax, called it sour and bitter. In some parts, it's a matter of taste, yes. But actually, there's a scientific reason why Europeans think our chocolate tastes so bad. First, we have to do some debunking. If you look at the nutrition labels of a European Cadbury bar and an American Hershey bar, this is what you'll see. All the ingredients listed by net weight. You may note that in the Hershey's bar, the first ingredient is sugar, but in the Cadbury bar, the first ingredient is milk. So you might think, bingo, there's the reason some Europeans say American chocolate is sickly sweet. But actually, you'd be wrong. In the US, milk is weighed in its evaporated, powdered state, while in the UK, it's weighed as a liquid. So actually, they're pretty much the same. The other main difference is that they use different emulsifiers, which smooth the chocolate. Hershey's uses soy lecithin and PGPR, while Cadbury uses E442 and E476. Again, this seems like a big difference. But actually, E476 is just the European name for PGPR. Wow, that's a mouthful. Another common argument you might hear is that there's a different amount of cocoa in American versus European bars. The US has a requirement for 10%, while EU law dictates that it must be at least 30% cocoa. US law says that that 10% can only be cocoa powder, but the EU's 30% contains cocoa solids aka both cocoa powder and cocoa butter. So again, they end up being pretty much the same. You might be starting to think that this is hopeless. They're practically the same chocolate. But these theories are focusing on the wrong ingredients. Let's now shift our attention to the most important ingredient, Milton Hershey. It was 1894 when 37-year-old candy manufacturer Milton Hershey decided to produce sweet chocolate as a coating for his caramels. It was a novel concept for the day, considering that milk chocolate was a rare treat for the rich and famous. Before this time, the intensive production process just wasn't possible on a large scale. But Hershey found inspiration from Henry Ford's production line and decided to apply that process to chocolate. It was a smashing success, and their flagship factory in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, became the Hershey Chocolate Company. In 1900, the company began producing milk chocolate in bars, wafers, and other shapes. With mass production, Hershey was able to lower the per unit cost and make milk chocolate for cheap. Hershey had been competing with other chocolate companies to have the cheapest chocolate bar in stores, and therefore the most accessible. Being a savvy businessman, he knew that increasing the quality or flavor would result in slim profit margins. So he decided to focus on the back end, aka the accumulation of ingredients. After he fine-tuned his cacao, he decided to focus on the next most important ingredient in a chocolate bar, the milk. And at the time, the early 1900s, fresh milk could not be legally stored for longer than 72 hours. That put a real cramp in Hershey's style, considering that after 72 hours, any unused milk had to be thrown out. And having fresh milk in chocolate meant that it couldn't be stored as long, even in bar form. So Hershey developed a process to do something to the milk in 1930. It's actually still a trade secret to this day, but experts speculate that he created a secret process to alter the milk. It kept the milk fresh past 72 hours, it gave Hershey the edge to make the cheapest and most widely accessible milk chocolate. But that process had an unexpected effect on the chocolate itself. The secret method is known today as lipolysis. In lipolysis, enzymes introduced to milk break down fatty globules into smaller, more stable fat molecules. In order to kickstart this process, you first need butyric acid. It's a compound that partially sours the milk, but does give it greater shelf life. The resulting flavor is instantly recognizable. It's also found in Parmesan cheese and vomit. And particularly high quantities of it are found in baby's vomit. It's sour and bitter. 
sometimes in a good way, like pungent cheeses, and sometimes in a bad way, obviously. It was first discovered in 1814 by French scientist Michael Chevrel, who was interested in finding the chemical responsible for the smell of butter that had gone bad. It's also the chemical responsible for that wet dog farmyard smell. It's secreted from dog's anal glands, so try not to think of that next time you eat a Hershey's Kiss. But don't worry, the butyric acid in chocolate is from milk. Today, European chocolates are preserved for similar amounts of time by using different chemical preservatives and specially sealed plastic packaging. But Cadbury still recommends that their milk chocolate is consumed within a year of it being produced. So does Hershey, so by now they're pretty similar. Lipolysis allowed Hershey's chocolate to take a resounding lead in the American chocolate wars. But World War II is what caused the taste of this chocolate to conquer American palates. During the war, Hershey's Chocolate scored a coveted contract to make military derations for the American Army. By 1945, Hershey was producing around 24 million bars a week for soldiers. These bars were a staple in the diets of the hundreds of thousands of soldiers away at war. They were so beloved that Hershey was awarded five Army-Navy E production awards. In contrast, Cadbury, Hershey's biggest European competitor, offered up its factory to make airplane parts and manufacture wartime supplies. They didn't manufacture any food at all, and in fact, in Britain, chocolate was rationed. This allowed Hershey to establish a taste monopoly. Almost every American soldier came home wanting chocolate that tasted the same as the one they'd been eating for years. Since all of the bars that Hershey made for the government used this top-secret milk stabilization method, Soldiers got used to the unique taste. In fact, they got so used to it that it became their new normal. Because of the wild popularity of Hershey's post-World War II, other chocolate companies in the US added butyric acid to their chocolate to mimic the flavor of Hershey's that all the soldiers absolutely loved. It became a staple of American commercial chocolate. If you're in the US, like me, you probably don't even notice it when you're chowing down on that chocolate bar from CVS. Today, lipolysis isn't necessary due to chemical advancements in food chemistry. Hershey still does it because the taste is what all of us know and love. Some smaller independent chocolate brands have stopped adding butyric acid to their chocolate in favor of marketing it as similar to European chocolates. With trends moving towards an appreciation of organic, pure foods, Hershey may not be at the top of the chocolate world much longer. But it's hard to beat their super cheap, super accessible chocolate, so don't expect it to go away anytime soon. But Europeans certainly notice, since none of their chocolate companies use the lipolysis method or supplement their chocolate. So on behalf of Americans, I am very sorry that our chocolate tastes terrible to you, but it's not our fault. Thanks so much for watching and let us know if you've ever tasted anything weird in your chocolate. Make sure you like this video, click subscribe, and make sure you tune into Cheddar Originals Wednesdays at 8 p.m. We'll see you next time.